What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Please follow my Instagram at Russo Lifts just in case something happens to this YouTube channel. You can follow, message, and you can watch my daily story content on Instagram. I'll see you there. What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Welcome back to the channel. Please run up the like and subscribe. I'm really trying to wake my channel up and I am redoing all my compound reviews and i'm trying to make this channel the encyclopedia for talking about anything related to bodybuilding compounds so as always this is a comment section that is open for you to discuss your own experiences with austrian and i will be reading and trying to interact with some of the comments down below but trying to do these reviews much better and lay it out in a much easier to understand format than when i was 18 doing these videos which don't take and throw up a you know, throwback. So I'm redoing all the compounds. I'm going to do every single compound. So subscribe moving forward. Today I'm going to be talking about Austrian. Austrian is also coined Enobosarm or the compound name, which is GTX024. So this patent was filed at the University of Tennessee in 2001, and then GTX picked it up and immediately started funding it. SARMs are not steroidal structured in nature. They are selective androgen receptor modulators in theory to be the evolution of testosterone as far as HRT, TRT as you age into your later years. They are trying to create a new class of drugs that is superior in androgen replacement therapy as in the clinical dosages, Austrian is selective towards skeletal muscle and bone and does not interact with the prostate nearly as much as said testosterone and it does not convert into estrogen or dht so you are never facing estrogen or dht issues so theoretically you could lower your hrt dosage or theoretically you could completely remove testosterone and replace an estrogen base such as exogenous estrogen such as birth control or an other estrogen base that in theory would be healthier long term when it comes to prostate binding when it comes to things that you know excess dht and estrogen cause as far as mitigation of estrogen aromatase inhibitors impacting the heart like there's a lot of promise there we'll go into reality and we'll go into bodybuilding abuses austrian is a second generation sarm so i also made a video on s4 in detail which you can check out above in the card but a second generation you know the first generations were basically prototypes proving that sarms work they modified ligands i believe and they you know moved along towards the second generation after they got the funding and they came out with GTX 007, aka S4, and then the other poster boy, which became the worldwide poster boy of SARMs, Austrian, MK2866. So, Austrian is utilized around the world, most popular SARM, most documented SARM, most lab rats, you know, have played around with Austrian at one point or another. So, as far as the benefits on paper of Austrian, right, you have low impact on binding with the prostate you have it low androgenic you know side effects so for females it makes it safe to avoid viralization side effects body hair growth side effects masculinization of the face side effects associated with other pds with women and obviously it's not going to convert into estrogen or dht which makes you know estrogen blockers which are horrible for the heart you know, that makes those out of the question with Austrian as long as you keep some sort of estrogen in there. And then in the clinical dosages, right, which is three milligrams, which when I get into the bodybuilding dosages and the dosages I played around with, I play around with 40 milligrams in the bodybuilding abuse dosage, right? But in the clinical dosages, three milligrams had virtually little impact on lunizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormones. So in the clinical dosages it did not suppress natural testosterone that much and everything still stayed online and the hpta axis was happy with the exogenous austrian added in at the clinical dosages and that you know austrian is going to selectively bind towards muscle and bone at that dosage and is going to prove a therapeutic effect 
on bone density and muscle atrophy as you age. So in general, on paper, clinically, you know, what they are going for is to improve HRT, TRT, especially in older people, right? Your bones get brittle as you age, your muscles atrophy as you age. Everyone is born from day one with a muscle wasting disease called aging, and this prolongs it. And in the clinical dosages, there's really not much to note as far as side effects. Now, let's get into bodybuilding dosages. So I played around with Austrian. Austrian was the first ever androgen I played around with, and I completely documented the entire cycle in video format. No bullshit. Back when I looked natty and I documented what happened to me, I'm the OG. I can say that comfortably. And I noted you know crazy results as far as obviously my androgen receptors were super sensitive i was young but i had much better strength i was cutting during that time so maintaining all strength in a caloric deficit gaining strength in a caloric deficit my muscles were fuller but it was definitely a sucked in like half natty type of look and then i recovered my natural testosterone to 600 plus directly after so i had no issue with PCT with this cycle and I believe with that specific cycle I experimented with 20 to 30 milligrams a day now later down the line I did creep it up to 40 50 milligrams a day because I was reading in the online forums that that was a more effective dosage at that dosage there is a pretty significant hepatoxicity so when you read online that it's super low hepatoxicity no in my opinion, the blood work I've read on high doses of Austrians, it's significantly hepatoxic above 30 milligrams a day. So you need to keep that into consideration and you cannot be combining, you know, an alcohol intake with a high dosage of Austrian. Now, the thing that draws me back to Austrian every time really isn't like the muscle building effects or anything. It's just how it impacts my mood. So something like R8D 140, something like Halotestin, something like Trestolone, something like Trembolone. That's all going to make me angry. That's all going to make my bipolarism come out. You know, I'm born with bipolarism, so I know what it's like to control my emotions. I know when my emotions go all over the place more than most people. And I can say for a fact with Austrian, it 100% makes me happier, improves my mood. I have more confidence. I'm more uplifted. And I can just see the benefit of the mental effect alone of Austrian. And I say this every time I talk about Austrian is like, it's just worth the mental effect alone. I feel amazing mentally with Austrian, whereas something like R8140, I'm snappy. I'm just going off on everyone. I'm horrible like mentally on that stuff. Whereas Austrian makes me feel amazing, confident, happy, uplifted, looking forward to the future. I've always noted that every time I've played around with Austrian, and that's what kept me coming back to Austrian because, in my opinion, there are stronger androgens to cause more results. But when you're looking for something that's a low toxicity profile, that's you know compliant with women as far as you know acute masculization side effects, you can look at something like Austrian and go, yeah, you know, this is definitely on the table if you're not looking to be a ginormous juiced up bodybuilder and you're looking for something to add onto your HRT, TRT that's going to cause a positive boost. Now we will go into the side effects, right? The side effects would be that it's going to crash sex hormone binding globulin in high enough dosages so SHBG does not recognize um, Austrian nor transport it, so it will crash over time. I made a full video discussing that in detail above, which I have Dante link in a card, and then it is also going to cause a negative skew on cholesterol very badly. So in the high enough dosages, right, you're going to hurt your HDL. So if you had a 60 HDL, you went on 30, 40 milligrams of Austrian after your cycle, you'd probably be at like a 40 to 30 HDL. So you got to keep that in mind and keep your LDL under control. But those are the main side effects. The last thing I wanted to get into is administration methods so arguably again i'm gonna just throw this number out here i don't know concretely for a fact this is what underground biochemists have told me but like the oral bioavailability of austrian is somewhere around 40 ish percent whereas the injectable administration method is probably around 70 ish percent if you guys go on my channel, which I have Dante link a card below, you guys got to check out my channel. Most honest biohacking channel out there. 
and YouTube does not want this channel to go off. So you guys got to spread with word of mouth. But yeah, I documented injectable Austrian. It was extremely liver toxic. So I told everyone earlier in this video that around 50 milligrams a day, it's significantly liver toxic, whereas something like S4 in a high enough dosage really isn't liver toxic. Austrian 100% is hepatoxic, and if you read online, it's, it's low toxicity. Yeah, it's low toxicity around 10 to 15 milligrams. 20 milligrams is where, like, that's the dosage online, right? And then I personally like 30 to 40. I feel like that's the upper echelon of no return, and then I've went up to 50. And then injection-wise, I went 40, which is equivalent of doing, like, 70 or something, and I had horrible liver pain, so keep that in mind. I would not recommend injecting Austrian whatsoever. Definitely would stick to oral administration form factor. So overall, Austrian is the poster SARM of what SARMs are supposed to do. It's what puts SARMs on the map, you know, in the biohacking community overall, and has a lot of benefits, right? It has a lot of benefits, and you know, as far as what it's clinically developed for, I think it proves what a SARM can do, right? You can add this on top of TRT, HRT. It's not going to impact biomarkers that extremely, whereas something like, you know, a different type of androgen like a steroid that has a 17 alkylated methylation, you know, you're going to face way more toxicity side effects. You're going to face estrogen conversion. You're going to face DHT conversion. So you're going to face gynecomastia side effects way easier. You're going to face hair loss side effects way easier. Androgenic acne way easier. Whereas something like Austrian doesn't convert to estrogen or DHT. I guess the other thing we could touch on is the binding affinity to the androgen receptor. So the binding affinity is just like... It's going to be to your natural testosterone to the androgen receptor, so you need to keep that in mind if you're on a high dosage of testosterone. Just know that whatever austerine you're adding in exogenously is going to bind with the AR, leaving more free testosterone to convert into estrogen or DHT. So you need to obviously modulate your testosterone dosages as you add in more austerine, aka lower it to avoid excess estrogen conversion, excess DHT conversion from the influx of free testosterone because the Austrian 100% of the time is going to be the testosterone, whether that be your natural testosterone or whether that be non-bioidentical, I'm injecting testosterone, it's going to beat it to the androgen receptor because it has a higher binding affinity. So keep that into consideration, but overall, I think the main takeaway with Austrian personally for me, Russo Two Cents Russo, is that you really, really notice the positive, uplifted mood effect of Austrian and the muscle building and conserving your muscle on a cut. You know, that's great. It does what a SARM is supposed to do. But in my opinion, there's obviously better options out there. But when it comes to like the mood, the feel, the uplifted feel, Austrian is just one of those ones where it could dramatically improve quality of life and i could see adding a little bit of it on trt would just boost the overall trt hrt experience overall so comment down below what you think about austrian and comment what i missed out on this video i will see you guys in my next one mm -hmm.